Uh, good afternoon. Welcome to All About Animals. I'm Sherry Gratitor, and my guests, multiple guests today, are Kim Hunter from It's the Green Goats. The it? Green Goats, yes. The Green Goats in Burlington, Wisconsin. This is Orca. And then <laughs> we have some of the Green Goats with us here. Uh, what's the concept? Um, the concept is that the reason we have invasive plants taking over our oak savannas and destroying everything is because the uh, ecosystem is out of balance. Uh, they need a predator on the invasive plants. Most of them are from, they call it Eurasian, being Europe, Asia. That's where these plants come from. That's where goats come from. This is the nat natural predator for those plants. We put them in here and they eat them. Uh, but they also eat other things, like you can see. Uh, I'm watching them eating over here, and they're working oh, they, on buckthorn. They're working on buckthorn, and you can see the blackberries over here. Blackberries are native, but they take over, and blackberries are encouraged by fire. So when we use fire to control other, other weeds in the oak savannas, it encourages more blackberries, and they can just get out of hand and make everything miserable. So the concept is that you bring in the goats. I bring in the goats. And it's a form of mowing. And they mow everything down, hopefully, that we want them to mow. Um, they will take other things. That, so everything within the fence that I set up is fair game. And you, we were talking about the fact that in the, like in the fall, when a lot of the good ground cover dies back, yeah, then that, that's a good time to bring them in? Yeah, it, it, then they can hit the woody vegetation. They are browsers. And their favorite foods are going to be woody vegetation. Yeah, you um, said buckthorn was a biggie. Buckthorn, multiflora rose, and honeysuckle. All That's of what which are invasives. Goats call that breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Beautiful. They love it. They will tear through that. And you can see this. What are we looking at here? I don't know what this is. It doesn't have enough leaves on it. Looks like it was a buckthorn. I think it's a... Uh... No, I think this might have been a honeysuckle. Uh -huh. <laughs> What's left of it? Um, and then they will also peel the bark off of things, mm -hmm. given enough time. And then those things will die? Um, they will, some of them will die. Some of them will grow back from their roots. Because buckthorn, multiflora rose, and honeysuckle were all cultivated as hedge plants. That means they, uh, they were bred to be able to be pruned severely and come back thicker. This is what makes them so invasive. When you cut them down, you cut down one stem, you get ten back. I always say that that uh, film uh, with Mickey Mouse, The Sorcerer's Apprentice, uh -huh. I say that broom was made of buckthorn. Every time Mickey cuts the broom in half, it comes back with more and more brooms until everything gets out of hand. So that's exactly what happens here. And this is my crew. So that's uh, uh, Bucky and Orca. They're brothers. And goats bond very closely. They will always be within a few feet of each other. Um, they're about four years old now. I bred them. I bred almost everything out here. William, I bought. He was a 4-H pet. And, <laughs> and, and he's very sweet. Is he a sweetheart? And Victoria, I got in a trade, and that's one of her little girls next to you there, the little Pinto. And so you bring them out to someone's property. Yes. Who wants to um, ecologically, environmentally, without toxins. Right. No poisons, um, except for my transportation, getting them here and back. Mm -hmm. uh, no carbon Right. Low, low carbon hoof print. And they clean out the invasives. And everything else. And everything else <laughs> that they can get to, which yeah. means that if you've got lots of ground plants that you've planted. You need to time it. Now, this forest here was timed for after everything bloomed. Mm -hmm. And of course, these this, this is a native grass. I think it's bottle brush grass. There's one of the seed heads. Um, grass is made to be made to be grazed. Yes. So it's not hurt by grazing. In fact, it reduces carbon in the atmosphere when you graze grass. It increases um, carbon sequestered yeah. in the soil. Uh -huh. And it does that because when you, if grass is eight inches tall, it, especially the natives, they will have roots. So if you take off, if you take that down to four inches, well, if you take half of the plant on top of the soil, graze it, half the roots will die. And then the plant will grow back on top and the roots will grow back. But the dead roots are now carbon sequestered in the soil. That's how the prairie built these incredible soils over the last 12,000 years since the last glacier. That's what richens them up. That's what richens them up. That's what made this the best farmland in the world. Yes. And we can do it if we continue grazing. 
So what you do is you come out and you put up a temporary fence. I put up temporary electric net fences. Mm -hmm. And then we put the goats in and with water said, and salt. Yeah. Well, if necessary, if there are things that need to be wrapped, you will wrap things like baby trees that need protecting. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. But I got to say, if it's in the fence, it's fair game. I will attempt to protect it. Uh -huh. But if it absolutely cannot be eaten, then we have to fence around it. Okay. And your charges have to do with travel time and fencing time. Mileage, the labor to put up the fence, and the day rate on the goats. And is it enough to bring them in one time? It depends on what you're doing. Buckthorn. It depends on what you're doing after they're here. Okay. Now, on this particular site, the ecologist is taking everything down for two reasons. One, he cannot see where the woody plants are. Now, this, was, this has been grazed now for four days. This is an area I've got, oh, a couple acres fenced here, a few acres anyway, uh -huh. fenced here. And they've been here for four days. And by the time they're done, this will be down. It will be clear. And you'll just see the stems of these plants with almost no leaves on them, of these woody plants. And how long will that take? Uh, in this section, probably, Probably another four days. They're probably halfway. Okay. Halfway. Mm -hmm. but, but I watch it. Sometimes they surprise me. Sometimes it seems like they're not quite done, and then boom, they are done. And, when I, and you know, <laughs> when I walk up, if they are done, they are all singing. It's all, meh, meh, as soon as I we're show done, up. We're done, Mom. Take us home <laughs> yeah, now. We're done. Move us to the next spot. Uh -huh. Goats, no matter how much you feed goats, they're always hungry. <laughs> so. Well, you know what? That's wonderful, though. You have, and their scat does nothing but enrich the soil. It's good for it. It Absolutely. introduces beneficial bacteria exactly. into the soil. So it's... And they digest the seeds. Okay, so they don't poop the seeds back out and start the thing no, all over they do, again. No, they digest, um, they say 99% of the seeds that they eat. Which is amazing. Yeah, it's which absolutely is. absolutely amazing. And so how did you, where did the concept of doing this come from? Oh, my parents moved from Northbrook, where they'd lived for over 40 years. And I've lived all over the country, and I come and go. But I was home with them at the time, and they wanted to move, and I found them this place in Kenosha County. And I'd had a, a horse before, and I've always loved horses, so I wanted to get a horse. But the, uh, it's six and a half acres, the place they bought, full of weeds. And I was out there trying to cut them down, and I was cutting thistles down. I had to use a saw. They were uh -huh. as big as my arm. And then they're, they fall on my head. And this was so unpleasant. And when I was in high school at, at Glenbrook North, uh -huh. um, at the time, we had a very innovative biology teacher, and we... Um, we, we would do projects, science projects, and one of them was to raise goats in the school. So we would get a goat in fall, a pregnant goat, she'd have her baby in the spring, and like five kids would take care of her, learn how to milk her, learn about milk, learn about baby goats. I was in on that, so I already loved goats. And everyone was saying, get a goat, they eat all that stuff. And they do, they eat burdock and curly dock, and poison ivy is one of their favorite. That's Nugget. Hello, you're very pretty. Nugget was basically born dead, and I resuscitated him. He's <laughs> so, very beautiful. So he's, he's my buddy. Hey, Nuggies, how you doing? Hi, buddy. And um, he says petting is nice. So anyway, so I already liked goats. Everyone was saying, get goats. And so I did, and I had run sled dogs for years in Cook County Forest Preserves, and I knew that it was all buckthorn. <laughs> and I know Riverwoods has a lot of buckthorn, and... Uh, I thought, boy, if these goats would eat buckthorn, they'd really be worth something. I'll teach them to eat buckthorn. Well, here's what happened. I got home, I turned my little goats loose, and they ran at a gallop to the nearest buckthorn, stood up, put their feet on it, and started eating. <laughs> it's their native food. They love buckthorn. And they will just, they will eat it, they will peel the bark off the trees, they will rub their horns on it, they really destroy it. Comes back from the roots. But once it does, it's all within reach of the goat. Uh-huh, so they will... two times really and you're done. No, two, <laughs> you don't know, buckthorn is tough. I, I'm quite aware of that, I know, we... I deal with it. You have to bankrupt the plant by causing it to use its bank account in its roots to regrow, and before it can make more food, you strip it off, it's gotta go back to its bank account, and once it's gone back often enough, then it dies. It depends on the individual buckthorn, how old it is, how much sugar it's got in its roots. And my buckthorn loves to grow. Uh, and we are running short on time. So we're going to talk about the next set of films we're going to see. Okay. We are going to see an area now 
that has been eaten down. Yes, where I moved them from on Sunday. And you'll see what they can do to an area. And then you'll tell people how to reach you if they want to make the attempt to go a different holistic route, basically, to control nasty plants. So we're going to go and we're going to take a walk over there. In this area, how long did it take them to clear? Five days. Okay, so we're going to see what these goats do. You have about 70 goats here, is that what you said? Yeah, I have 72 in this uh, paddock right here. 72 goats in and five I've, days. I have 30 working in Milwaukee County right now. And we're going to go take <laughs> a look. And by the way, you said you did a job in Bannockburn, did you? Oh, yes. Yes. So you do go all over the area? Yes, I do. Okay, we're going to go look at the wasteland they left in the other area. Okay. <laughs> As promised, this is the after. This is after. It looks like it looks like a forest fire, it like but it's, it's not black. Burned. Yeah, it does. This, this, this is buckthorn. This this was about this high. Um, you see, this one's been bit off. This is buckthorn in July. Amazing. It, it is not necessarily dead, even though it looks dead. Um, and part of this, the idea here, was that this will leaf out in about four to six weeks if this is not dead it will develop some small leaves. At that point, the restoration expert who has been working on this place for years is going to spray it with one of the chemicals they use to kill woody plants. Before the goats grazed here, there were native flowers all over here, and these were hidden amongst them. So the restoration expert could not find the, the buckthorn, even though he knew it was here. And if he had sprayed, he would have hit the native plants. Now, you can see here, the native plants have been taken off at ground level. Exactly what would happen if a forest fire had come through. All the native plants are adapted to fire, they will be fine. But when he sprays, they are all safely underground. Their roots are protected, the buckthorn's going to get the spray, the native plants are safe. So that, that was the goal with the goats here. And then eventually the native plants will come back. They'll be back and next year. And hopefully the buckthorn won't. Because the native plants die back every year. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. So they'll be they'll be back. Uh, do me a favor. Tell people how they can reach you. Okay. I have uh, two farms I work out of. Uh, one is my parents' place, which is in Kenosha County in Wisconsin. Um, it's just a little bit east of Lake Geneva, and they can reach me there at two six two five three seven two two three four. I also have my farm in Monroe, Wisconsin, which is south of Madison, and I work from that location as well. And my number there is 608-426-2825. And how big a range do you cover? Uh, I, I cover... Just call me? Just call me, yeah. And I come with a trailer and a bunch of I my come. buddies, huh? I do southern Wisconsin and northern Illinois. And I also sell goats if someone's in a position where they'd like to keep a couple on a couple acres to keep it open. And you have a website? I do. It is thegreengoats.com. Okay. It's, a, it's, it's an incredible concept. It's absolutely wonderful. You can stay away from herbicides. You can let the goats do their thing. It's, it's, it's just a nice organic way of dealing with an overly enthusiastic organic problem. Thank you it so is. much for showing us around. You're welcome, thank you for coming out. And we will now take you to Save a Pet and show you some of the dogs and cats that are there waiting for adoption.